Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Vanderhorst and I'm a technical leader in marketing engineering for Cisco XDR. In this video, we're going to build a simple workflow in XDR automation to help you get familiar with the automation interface and its components. If you haven't already watched our automation overview video, we recommend doing so before you watch this as it'll help you get familiar with automation components and terminology. The use case for our sample workflow is to consume an IP address and isolate the corresponding endpoint in Cisco Secure Endpoint. This will require us to search Secure Endpoint for the IP address, extract the matching endpoint's unique ID, and then use that ID to request the machine be isolated. We'll start from the workflows page and click on the Create Workflow button. For this use case, we'll leave the blank Custom Workflow selected and click Continue. In the workflow editor, the first thing we need to do is give the workflow a name. In this case, I'll enter isolate endpoint by IP. Next, scroll down the workflow's properties and click add variable. This variable will be used to provide the workflow the IP address to search for in secure endpoint. The default data type of string is fine, and the scope will be changed to input, since the workflow will need this value before it can run. We'll also make the variable required, since the workflow can't run without it, and click Save. The next piece of information the workflow needs is a target. The target will allow the workflow to communicate with the Cisco Secure Endpoint API. Down in the Target section of the workflow's properties, select the Execute on this target option. Then select the HTTP Endpoint target type, and select the Cisco Secure Endpoint target. This particular target was automatically created for us when Secure Endpoint was integrated into Cisco XDR. Now we can start building the workflow itself. In the toolbox under Activities, scroll to the very bottom and grab an HTTP request from the Web Service category. This activity will allow the workflow to make an HTTP-based request to Cisco Secure Endpoint. Leave the target and account key configurations as is because those options will be inherited from the workflow itself. Under the HTTP request section, enter the relative URL for the request. In this case, it's computers question mark limit equals one ampersand internal underscore IP equals. This will be appended to the host and path configured in the target. Right now, the internal IP parameter is blank so we need to insert the workflow's IP address variable into the URL here. Click on the Variable Browser button, click Workflow, then Input, and then the IP address variable. After clicking Save, the variable will be inserted into the relative URL. A little further down under Headers, set the Accept header to Application slash JSON to make sure Secure Endpoint gives the workflow a JSON formatted response. Finally, at the very bottom of the activities properties, check continue on HTTP error status code. This will allow the workflow to do some error handling to make sure the request succeeded. So far, we've created a new workflow, configured an input variable and target, and added an HTTP request activity. Next, we'll add a condition block to check whether that request to secure endpoint was successful. Under the logic tab of the toolbox, drag a condition block onto the canvas after the HTTP request. The condition block's properties will show on the properties editor, and we'll set the display name to was the request successful. The condition branch on the right will check for a failure in the request to secure endpoint. Click on the condition branch on the right and name it no. Then under the condition, click the variable browser button for the condition property. We're going to check the status code of the request to secure endpoint. So click Activities, HTTP Request, Status Code, and then click Save. To check for a failure, set the comparison to not equals and the value to 200. So this condition will be satisfied if the HTTP request's status code is not equal to 200, which would indicate something went wrong. In the case of a failure, we'll want to end the workflow. This can be done using a completed activity, also from the logic tab of the toolbox. Drag a completed activity into the condition branch on the right. 
On the completed activities properties, set the display name to failed. Change the completion type to failed, and then enter a result message of your choice. Did you notice that variables were entered here without using the variable browser? You can type a dollar sign, start typing a variable name, and then select it from the autocomplete menu as a shortcut. Next, let's turn our attention to the left side of the condition block. This side will handle a successful request to secure endpoint. Click on the left condition branch and set the display name to yes. Then set the condition to the same as the right side, but with a comparison of equals. So the condition will be status code equals 200, which indicates success. Now that the workflow made the request to secure endpoint and received a response, it needs to extract the ID of the endpoint returned. This can be done using a JSON path query activity from the core section of the activities tab of the toolbox. Drag a JSON path query into the left condition branch. In the JSON path query properties, check the continue workflow execution on failure box. This will allow us to make sure a computer ID was actually found. Then set the source JSON to query to the body of the HTTP request. This represents the response from the Secure Endpoint API. Finally, under JSON path queries, we need to configure the activity with which piece of information to extract. Click Add, and then enter the query path and property name shown. To make sure a computer ID was found, the workflow should check that the JSON path query activity was successful. Drag a new condition block from the Logic tab onto the canvas after the JSON path query activity, and then set the display name to was an ID extracted. We only need to check if the request failed, so delete one of the branches by hovering over it, clicking the three dot menu, and then clicking delete. Click on the remaining condition branch, set the name to no, and then set the condition to check if the succeeded attribute of the JSON path query activity is equal to false. Note that the variable browser is hierarchical and follows the same path and structure as the workflow itself. To find the JSON path query, we traverse the variable browser following the same path as the workflow itself would take to the activity through the condition block. If the ID extraction fails, it probably means that a matching endpoint wasn't found. In this case, we need to end the workflow and return an error. This can be done with another completed activity from the Logic tab of the toolbox. Drag one into the No Condition branch and set its properties. At this point, the workflow has searched Secure Endpoint for a computer by IP address, made sure the request was successful, attempted to extract the matching computer's ID, and made sure an ID was actually found. The last thing we need to do is request the computer be isolated if the ID was returned. On the Activities tab of the toolbox, expand the Cisco Secure Endpoint category. Then drag the Secure Endpoint Isolated Host activity onto the canvas after the Was an ID Extracted condition branch. If the extraction fails, the condition branch will end the workflow. However, if the extraction succeeds, the condition branch will be skipped and the Isolate Host activity will be executed. The only input the isolate host activity requires is a computer ID. So provide the computer ID JSON path variable from your JSON path query activity. The workflow is now complete. The last step is to click the validate button in the top right corner to make sure the workflow is valid. If it is, the validate button will become disabled and say validated. Now run the workflow by clicking the run button. Enter an IP address of an endpoint in your Cisco Secure Endpoint environment and click Run. Note that you should probably provide an IP address for an endpoint that you don't mind isolating. The Run view will show you what the workflow is doing as it executes. You can click on the activities on the canvas as they are completed to see how they behaved. This allows you to see what their variables look like, what information was passed between them, and if they succeeded or failed. In this case, the workflow searched for the endpoint, extracted its ID successfully, and then requested it be isolated.
This simple demonstration of building a workflow is meant to help you become more comfortable with the Cisco XDR Automation Workflow Editor. The workflow built here is a practical example of something you might want to do in the real world and combines building some pieces manually with using an Atomic for Cisco Secure Endpoint that's already built into the product and written for you. Automation is a powerful part of Cisco XDR that allows your organization to accelerate how you investigate, respond, integrate products with each other, and more. Whether you use the workflows built into XDR, write your own, import workflows from the automation exchange, or a combination thereof, you can realize significant time savings and efficiency for your organization. To learn more about Cisco XDR, please visit cisco.com go slash XDR. If you're more developer-minded, check out the Cisco DevNet resources for XDR at developer.cisco.com slash XDR. We hope you enjoyed this overview of building a workflow in XDR automation, and until next time, take care.